Hello people of YouTube, this is Random Fix, and in this video today we're going to be trying out the Launch Tech USA Millennium 90 Pro. And this scan tool is currently under $200, and it does some pretty cool stuff. And in this video today, we're going to put that to the test, so we're going to try it out. I'm going to show you guys what's in the box, and lastly, we're going to go ahead and give this a Random Fix tool grade so you can make a better decision for yourself. And as always, my video is going to be straight to the point, and I'm going to keep my feedback honest so you guys make a better decision for yourself. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we got the 90 Pro here from launch and this is the Millennium series. So it does include the lifetime updates, which you need to do via PC. It comes with everything you need here. And to hook this up, you're gonna basically take this connector right here and then on your vehicle, And in the vehicle, you need to locate this port right here. This is the OBD2 port, and it's located inside the driver footwell area on 90% of vehicles. And it could be in different colors. And all you do is go ahead and slide this on. And once you slide it on, the unit will power up. So it runs off the power of your vehicle. It does not have any batteries or anything else built in. And you want to be sure to turn on the ignition system. So, so if you have a push to start button like this, you want to keep your foot off the brake and make sure that you hit the button twice. Your check engine light will turn on and you're good to go. All right, so the unit is powered on, our ignition is on, and this is the main interface here. And we can see that there's a couple of buttons here. And the very first button right here is DTC. So the very first button right here is going to be DTC and when you hit this button right here which stands for diagnostic trouble code it will go ahead and try to see if the vehicle has any fault codes. And the F2 button right here is going to clear any emissions related information here. And then we have F3 button right here which is basically for the inspection monitors. And these are the monitors that are required for emissions testing. and if you're buying a vehicle, you always want to make sure that all the monitors are ready. And so all our monitors are ready. And this one right here says NA because it doesn't apply. So this is a great scan tool to have if you're going to go ahead and purchase a vehicle. And then we have this F4 button which will provide you help in more advanced menus. So on the main menu here, we have four different sections. We have Diagnose, Review where you can go ahead and play back certain information. We have a setting button, which we could go ahead and change the language, the units, and the record mode. And lastly, we have a help section here. So let's go ahead and go under diagnose. So over here, we have two different ways of scanning a vehicle. And the very first way is gonna be OBD2, which is basically a protocol that came up in 1996 and any vehicle made since then for the North American market conforms to this OBD2 standard and you can get an OBD2 scanner for about twenty to sixty dollars and then we have the scan function right here and this scan function is the reason why you're paying two hundred dollars for this tool and this will go ahead and allow you to scan the Toyota site instead of just the generic onboard diagnostic site here. So let's go ahead and choose that. And then you gotta go through the menu and choose your make. Mine happens to be a Toyota, but I just wanna show you what makes are available. So we have Fiat, GM, Isuzu. There's a bunch of makes. And this should cover any vehicle 1996 and newer. And I went ahead and updated the software last night, so this should be all up to date. And I did want to point out this unit has a three and a half inch screen and it is not touch screen. So you do have to navigate using these buttons here. Touch screen would make it a little bit easier and just give you an alternative way of using it versus just the arrows here. So let's go to Toyota. And right here we could go and diagnose. So let's see if this one works and choose the area your vehicle is made for. Mine happens to be made for the North American market. And I'm gonna go ahead and do an automatic search here. So it's gonna go and attempt to find all the different modules. So this scan tool here has 
access to the engine, the transmission, the ABS, and the SRS system. And the SRS system is going to be the safety restraint system. So later on, we'll actually turn on airbag light and see if this can actually clear it. And then it can go ahead and do, I believe, six different resets. So it can do uh, ABS bleeding, and we'll cover that a little bit more towards the end as well. So on this particular vehicle here, it only picked up two modules here. It picked up the VCS in the ABS unit, and it picked up the airbag system. So I don't actually have access to the engine or transmission on this vehicle here, which is definitely not a good sign. And I can still access that information on the OBD2 side if I went back. However, that information is not as valuable as the information here on the Toyota side. So OBD2 side, we can go in here and access the OBD2 side here and it gives me the inspection monitors, lets me know all eight monitors are complete and zero that are incomplete. So you get a nice little glimpse of what's happening with the vehicle. And now we can go ahead and read codes, erase codes. And this is just for the engine control module. It doesn't include the ABS, the SRS systems, or the transmission. So we're going to go and read the codes, erase the codes, check the inspection monitors again, view some of the data streams here. And on the OBD2 side, we're going to go and select all the items. And here we have 38 different data streams we can monitor. So if I was to start the vehicle, you can see the RPM is right there. And there's not much delay in this. Okay, so those are the 38 different data streams that are available. So if I had a check engine light on and I wanted to know what the temperature was outside, how much load I was putting on the engine or anything else, I can view the freeze frame data. I could do some OBD2 tests here. And just realize if something is shown doesn't mean that the scan tool actually supports it. And I'm going to show you guys that in a little bit as well on some of the other functions, onboard testing, evap testing, and vehicle information. So this could pull up the VIN number on the vehicle here and so you could verify it's the original computer if you wanted to. So we're going to go back. Let's go back to the Toyota side here. And on my vehicle I have a oil reset that needs to be done. And so if you wanted to do that, it'll give you the directions. However, this is not going to automatically do it for you. It will show you how to do it using your navigation system or the buttons on your steering wheel. So I wish this vehicle and this unit could go ahead and communicate and do it just through the device, but that's not the case. So if you guys are looking for this, my best advice is always email the manufacturer your VIN number, the make and model of your vehicle, and they'll tell you all the different features available on your vehicle. So this will basically walk me through how to do this and I have to select the vehicle and so on. We have a brake reset, we have a steering wheel angle sensor, a DPF reset, this is for diesel vehicles, battery change, if you had a BMW for example you would go ahead and use that function right there to go and register the new battery and we have an ABS bleeding function. I just want to show you guys on this vehicle even if it's on the menu the function is not there, so we're going to go and pretend that we're going to go and bleed the brakes on this. Let me know to turn the ignition on. Now you're going to select the area the vehicle is destined for, and we are in North America, and it lets us know that this function is not available. So that's pretty disappointing. And under Diagnose, we already realized that we only have two functions that are available and they are going to be the ABS and SRS. Let's pretend to access the engine control module and if we look we get a communications error and my ignition on the vehicle is on. Now let's go ahead and access the SRS airbag system and we can see we currently don't have any code so let me trigger an airbag light and we'll go and try to erase it with this unit here. So I've gone ahead and triggered airbag light on the vehicle now 
now we can see that there's actually going to be two different codes here. So we have a B, which stands for body, 1876. And also another code, which is the identical code. So one is going to be pending and one can be permanent. Let's go try to erase this code now. Okay, so there's the code. And let's see if this can actually clear the fault code. And it said it is successful. So no code is found here. Let's go and start the vehicle. And we can see that the vehicle is on because it says it's ready right there. And there is no more airbag light on, which is great. So far, the unit's OB2 functions work. The Toyota side only gives us limited access to the ABS and the SRS system. And let's go ahead and try this out on another vehicle. We got ourselves a Mercedes. And we happen to be sitting in a 2016 Toyota Prius. So this really should work as it's not a one month old car anymore. And the Mercedes is a 2019 and that should definitely be able to work too. So let's see what happens. All right, so let's try out the Mercedes here. So the ignition is on, and we're going to go ahead and hit Diagnose. Select your version of the software. We're going to select Sprinter. And check that out, guys. It does not list the 907. It only has the older model, so that is definitely not a great thing there. And on the OBD2 side, we can see it's able to access the OBD2 side of the vehicle here. And we got nine monitors that are ready, zero that are incomplete. And it has 24 data streams that it supports. And we can see that there's really no lag. But as far as scanning the OEM side, definitely does not work. And now let's check out what's in the box. So now let's check out what actually comes with the unit. So we got the unit here itself. It came with this film, which can just be peeled off. And to go ahead and get the unit connected to your vehicle, you're gonna have to connect the cable. So the cable was included in the unit. And the unit has a couple of ports. And we have a little memory card that was included and it looks like a 16 gig card so that was already in there and the setup of this did require a PC I basically went to the website stated in the document connected the USB cable to the bottom and connected to my PC downloaded the software when you connect it to your PC you'll get a serial number and activation code on the screen here or you can go ahead and take that little card out that I showed you put it in here go ahead and follow the directions here. I always enjoy scan tools that allow me not to go and have to pull that card out all the time. But this is a pretty cool idea. And you get a nice little bag like this so you can go ahead and protect your investment afterwards. So let's take a quick little look at the box here. So the box came pretty well packaged up. And if you take a little glimpse at the back, it lists all the different features that some of the different models do. And it looks like the main difference between the 90 Pro and the regular 90 is that the 90 Pro is going to let you graph out the transmission and engine data and the rest of it looks like they're pretty comparable so if I find any links out there for this unit you'll find them in the video link down below if you're finding this video to be helpful consider giving the video a thumbs up and if you guys are new to the channel why not subscribe as it's absolutely free it would mean the world to me thanks so now is my favorite part of the video. This is where we're gonna go ahead and give the scan tool a random fixed tool grade so you can make a better decision for yourself. And I did wanna go ahead and start off with thanking the vendor for sending me this. And my whole hope of doing these reviews is to go ahead and give the vendor so much feedback that they ultimately make a better product for the consumer here. And this is gonna go ahead and get a score of 48 out of 100. And one of the reasons why this is one of the lower scores that I've given to a scan tool is because on the 2016 Toyota when we connected it, it wasn't able to support the transmission 
or the engine control module, which are very essential in troubleshooting your vehicle. And also on the Mercedes, the 907 Sprinter was not supported, so I really did hope that this had all the support that we needed to make this video a complete hit. And I did do the update before I went ahead and tested it. And I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys are new to the channel, you found this information to be helpful, consider giving the video a thumbs up as it would really let me know if I'm doing a good job. If the video sucked, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. It also lets me know how I'm doing. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing as it would mean a lot to me and it's absolutely free. And if you guys want to learn more about scan tools, go ahead and check out the whole scan tools playlist here at the end of the video so you guys could get a better idea what are your different options. Thanks again and you'll find any coupon codes in the video link down below. And in the future if the unit has better support I will go ahead and update you guys and if you guys find out that it works for some of the vehicles that we mentioned in the video please let me know as well. Have a great day.